Flat earthers and maths never go well together. Flat earthers and whiteboards though, for the purposes of a good laugh, go together like egg and bacon. In fact, even if you didn't have an earth beneath you, you would still see this apparent convergence. You don't want to miss this one. Roll the intro. Hello everyone and welcome along to this Sunday edition of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon and Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors of this video today, Boot.dev. Boot.dev are building the smartest way to master back-end development by taking on the hardest problem when it comes to e-learning, boredom. The folks at Boot.dev believe the smartest way to learn to code is to avoid getting bored. You will earn XP, levels, achievements, and complete quests so you can get a top spot on the global leaderboard. Now the platform is designed to get you writing a ton of code because getting your hands on the keyboard and shipping projects is the only way to learn. And you will do that by looking at back-end web development from start to finish in the Python and Go programming languages. Boot.dev is online, self-paced and feels like a captivating RPG game. All whilst having the option to work remotely or from home. Now programmers actually have amazing earning potential. According to Stack Overflow, the median salary for back-end developers in the US in 2023 is over $100,000. Now to aid you in all of this, there's also a boot.dev Discord community, which is very active and there to help if you ever get stuck on coding challenges. Click the link in the description box and use my code SIMANDAN to get 25% off your first payment towards boot.dev. That's 25% off your first month or your first year, depending on which subscription you choose. Happy coding. Right, on with today's video, and you might have recognized the flurf at the start there, Phuket word. He settled himself in front of a whiteboard and he wants to talk about geometry. Perhaps we should call him Professor Phuket from now on. Let's hear him do his thing. Hello flat earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. Most of us grew up believing that we live on a globe earth because the heliocentric religion used scientism to make a pseudo connection between geometry and our subjective view of the earth perspective. So really, there is no relationship. They are distinctly different. When you look at reality and you look at how our eyes work, you realize a few things. Firstly, that uh, the horizon is your eye level. 34 seconds in and he's already wrong. Now for this, I point you to the excellent website of MC Toon, who has documented for years now and many, many times that the horizon is not always at eye level. It's a strange thing to claim anyway for flat earthers, this one. The horizon rising to eye level does not actually help a flat earth, or a globe for that matter. The horizon is this apparent convergence and it really does shows you where you are, your height in relationship to everything else around you. That's what it does. It doesn't actually matter what shape the earth is. It could be uh, concave, convex. The horizon is your subjective eye level. The horizon is there because of the curvature of the earth's surface. At sea level, the horizon is usually around three miles from you in any direction. But our eyes can see a hell of a lot further than three miles. If the Earth was indeed flat, the horizon would go on much, much, much further. And we'd be able to make out much more than we do. And I don't want to hear perspective from flat earthers because that doesn't wash. And so it appears where you are in relationship to everything in the foreground and the background. And uh, so we can talk about the eye level as the height of the observer's eyes. You can talk about this in terms of physical height, but also we all know when you look at it that the horizon is at your eye level. It's going to be different for every individual. Except it's not at your eye level. Okay, so it just tells you where you are in relationship to everything else around you, regardless of the shape of the earth beneath your feet. In fact, even if you didn't have an earth beneath you, you would still see this apparent convergence. Um. No, I don't think you'd see much, buddy. So here we can see that you've got two people. One standing up has a higher line of sight than the person sitting down, or a higher eye level than the person sitting down. And so they each have their own individual horizon in line with their line of sight. 
Now, if you take a camera, for example, uh, and you set it up to be horizontal, then you will see this convergence, the horizon, at the center of the field of view, no matter how high above the Earth you go. Uh, even if you go to something like 40 or 50,000 feet, uh, you might not be able to see the actual Earth anymore, but you will see the clouds uh, that are beneath you appear to converge with the clouds that are above you, or whatever is above you at that height. 50,000 feet? Well, Mr. Sensible sent his Mage 2 project all the way up to 38,000 feet, and I think we saw quite clearly with that that the horizon was very much lower than eye level. So, in the mathematical sense, of course, what we have uh, is a circle here. Uh, we've got the centre of the circle, we've got, these, we've got a radius, and then we've got the height of the observer, and then you would have a tangent line going from that observer to a point across the surface of the Earth at a certain distance, at which we can say that is where that person will see their horizon. Again, this doesn't actually fit with reality. We can see further than the horizon is supposed to appear. Yes, due to a little thing called refraction, but that is still limiting. It doesn't allow us to see forever. And of course, our height above sea level helps too. For example, if you were stood around a thousand meters above sea level, your horizon, taking refraction into account, would be around 120 kilometers away. And there is a change in what we see, but uh, the horizon always is your eye level. Except it's not, but please go on. So in this sense, of course, it, it, it does become quite predictable because uh, once you have the height of the observer measured or assumed in, in, a, in an illustration or a model like this, and you have an assumed radius, uh, for the Earth it's 3,959 miles radius, and then you have this length of the tangent line, this line here going from the, the height of the observer and uh, going across this arc length here, this part of the circle that is between the observer and the point in the distance. Uh, and then we have this angle created here for that. And so again, you can get very accurate results by using this kind of model and so it would all appear to work, but it doesn't fit with reality. So it all appears to work, but it doesn't work. A very succinct explanation there though, Phuket word, well done. However, this here is a very good example of the slothful induction fallacy, where sufficient logical evidence strongly indicates a particular conclusion is true, but you fail to acknowledge it. Instead, attributing the outcome to either coincidence or something entirely not related. Which is what you are about to do, I imagine. The horizon you see in your eyes has nothing to do with the tangent lines in geometry. There we go. Knew it. We do not look down. There is no horizon dip to talk of. All of that is just excuses and obfuscation to ignore the reality of the way we see the world. and that horizons are your eye level. The evidence suggests otherwise, Phuket word. Wouldn't you all agree? So it doesn't matter if you're in an aircraft flying at 45,000 feet, your horizon will always be at your eye level. If you're using a camera and you tilt that camera, then uh, the, the horizon in your field of view will either rise or fall to the top or the bottom of your field of view because you've tilted it, but the horizon still indicates your eye level, your height compared to everything else around you. He waffles on a lot, doesn't he? And so let's have a look at how we actually see horizons. Uh, I've just kind of done some colors here to show what we are seeing. So this, of course, is the kind of view you would have from your eyes looking forwards. Uh, it's not a side on view anymore. So ignore these side on views for now. Uh, but uh, apart from the fact that what we are looking at here is now how one, one of these people will see the horizon in front of their eyes. So we've switched and that's part of the bamboozle. Thanks, I don't think we all figured that one out, PW. Definitely needed a 30 second explanation for that. It's just this switching of uh, the orthographic views that we are given uh, into this assumption of what we are seeing in front of us. Uh, 
So you can see from this, we've got clouds up here. And you would know that the, the larger clouds that are appearing higher up in the field of view are actually closer to us. So you can see that uh, as those clouds get further away, they would appear to get smaller and smaller and closer and closer to the horizon, which is basically this band of convergence between the sky and the, the, the water in this case that we can see in front of us. I mean, what is this really explaining? None of this either debunks the globe or proves a flat earth. Um, so what I've done here is you can, you can see that obviously um, the water in front of us would be quite, it would appear quite spaced out, the waves, but as you look further into the distance, then everything appears to get more, oops, I'll just get into the camera, more and more condensed in the distance, yeah? You see? And uh, this does change with our height. The higher up you go above the surface, the further you will see more detail across the surface. But you, so you get this compression. So let's just assume we're just standing on the shore here and we're looking across this water. And then what you have here is, um, what I've done in, in purple here, is uh, you get mirroring. Not all the time. You need two different layers of air with different temperatures for that to happen. But there's no mirroring going on here, or here, or here, or here. You get the picture. So with that, I can say we're all done and dusted for another Flat Earth Friday. And as this Sunday edition, the last one of the 500K subsi subscriber celebration week. I do hope you've enjoyed this week of a video every day, and it's not quite over yet because we still have the live stream tonight 9 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Come and join me for that if you get the chance. The link is in the description and I might be drinking tequila. I don't know yet. Thanks so much for watching today. It truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel. As I said, we're on the march to a million now. Uh, I know it's going to take a while, but we will get there like we did with the half. Uh, and of course, if you really enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button too. Just enough time to once again thank Boot Dev for sponsoring today's video. Remember, click the link in my description box and use the code SIMANDAN to get 25% off your first payment towards boot.dev. That's 25% off your first month or your first year, whichever subscription you choose. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you in the live stream tonight. See you there. Can't wait. Goodbye. <laughs>